so welcome everyone um, to this very beautiful session on the occasion of national science day um, uh, um, and uh, this particular session has been organized by isar pune and i'm really gladful that i have been given an opportunity to talk about the most important and crucial topic uh, of uh, plastic pollution and uh, that is why we are going to throw light on uh, on the specific topic and the title today is tackling plastic pollution uh, this particular topic actually is uh, you know in consensus with the theme of the national science day which is the integrated approach in science and development for a sustainable future uh, we all think about sustainability and i think uh, plastic pollution is something that we all need to act on so that uh, you know we have a sustainable future so let's start today's session and uh, you know learn a lot more about plastics you know how to recycle them what is plastic and uh, you know why there is plastic pollution and what you can do at your level to minimize it um so let's focus on understanding a little bit about plastic and its applications and you know whether it's a green material or not so what is plastic um for all of you who are watching this video uh you know plastic is a very generic term that's been used obviously under that you have so many different grades so many different chemistries so many different applications but we'll just talk about the basic chemistry of how any plastic is formed so you have a single unit which is called as a monomer which is a single chemical molecule it can be anything and once it's linked together it forms a chain and that is called as a polymer so polymer is a chemical name for plastic a plastic is a more general name that's being used uh, globally and for everybody who understands the specific material so uh, all different single monomers will link together to form a polymer and um, every plastic is a chain of different monomers it has a different chemistry it has a different application it looks it has a different look it has a different flow it has different properties so all of this particular uh, you know uh, 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 particular aspects of these monomers define the final uh, outcome of the plastic and obviously it's very varies application Uh, let's focus on uh, what are the sectors in which application it's been used uh, first and foremost it's used heavily in medical and healthcare i think uh, the during the pandemic i believe a lot more plastic was spotted than it could be ever in any of the decades people wearing ppes people wearing masks uh, you know uh, plastic sheets being used everywhere um as a as a precautionary precaution measure to avoid uh, contamination and obviously you know for the for the reason to uh, protect that uh, you know nothing is contagious um so medical and healthcare are one of the biggest sectors that consume a lot more plastic um and uh, then obviously is followed by electronic waste agriculture defense textiles automotive food and beverage and uh, you know specialty applications like you can see an airplane here or a train uh, or a bus all of these are actually made out of uh, uh, you know plastic so the the application is really really huge and you will be thrilled to know that about 4 million people are employed in india on the plastics industry so you can uh, relate that um, it is a really important sector and uh, its applications and its uh, its properties are so unique that it has found way into every domain that you come across i think maybe if you get a chance you can just do a little plastic analysis in your own house and find out how much plastic you actually have in your particular house so um, a lot of uh, people ask me whether you know plastic is green or plastic uh, you know is is uh, uh, is a bad material it's a negative material you know it it only creates pollution is that really the right information so i think uh, the fact that somebody can check if a material is green is basically based on the life cycle analysis so for example you know you have to see from the time the particular material is made whether it's glass or material a glass or metal or uh, you know wood from the time it's extracted from the environment to to a product that's been made and to the fact that it's disposed and recycled and used again the entire life cycle analysis is evaluated to decide whether a material is green and you will be thrilled to know that in fact plastic is much more greener than paper steel aluminum and glass so because obviously the energy that it consumes uh, throughout its life cycle analysis is weight it's lesser than the respective materials 
so despite plastic being greener you know it's still a really problematic issue because you know it it doesn't it lacks value people don't understand how to dispose it and you know so on now why there is plastic pollution now i did mention that plastic is a much greener material than wood uh, than sorry uh, than metal or glass or uh, 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 than metal or glass or paper and still ends up being the most talked about material and the, talk, the most talked about plastic pollution issue so here are some of the reasons why plastic pollution is a problem first of all littering like i told you that we end up throwing plastic waste everywhere we don't have lack of uh, we don't have proper waste segregation we do not separate out the plastic in our house we don't know where to dispose it even if i think uh, a lot of people ask me that you know i i segregate all my plastic but where do i give what do i do about it um so that knowledge is lacking lack of monitoring and implementation of government policies though there is a lot more being talked about plastic being taken back for recycling it that particular implementation at the grassroots level is still weak and needs much more you know push to have a complete plastic yeah. take back a lack of sensitization among the consumers and obviously lack of infrastructure for collection and disposal when i say lack of sensitization among the consumers is that uh, they do not understand the implication they do not understand the problem that it is going to uh, give them and they just end up disposing the way they want um, and obviously the infrastructure for collection and disposal is also weak because like i told you that it has entered in the most uh, you know remotest corner of india but people don't know where uh, you know i should dispose or there is no look the local bodies also lack knowledge in collection and its disposal so obviously um all of this results into this plastic being linked to leaked into the environment so it goes into the land water and obviously then ends up harming the marine life and the wildlife so these are some of the reasons why plastic pollution is happening so how to reduce it you know um is there a, a, a very a very something a very scientific and a technological way at your own uh, you know at your own uh home that you can do i think that that is something you don't really need to do you probably need to take very basic steps in reducing your own plastic pollution first of all all of you should start segregating waste efficiently you know you should have three bins instead of one dustbin one goes to organic waste one goes to dry waste under which all types of plastic paper metal glass wood rubber everything comes and then obviously the last is rejected waste where there is any cotton blood stain cotton sanitary waste all of this that can be infectious and hazardous can go into that dustbin so waste segregation is must and is extremely important and i think everybody should follow it it should be a rule rather than an option you need to create awareness about this as well um basically i think this particular um uh, cause needs much more talking much more education and i think wherever you are in this country um you know please explain this to your family friends and peers that they should start acting on uh, you know plastic recycling and waste segregation efforts you can tie up with your local recycler uh, whoever uh, it is and you know ask them questions uh, whether what type of waste you can give all of these things you can uh, you know discuss with them and have a good system of uh, you know uh, donating your plastic waste to them and obviously stop littering uh, and the last but not the least is to follow the five r's first of all uh, we all should actually focus on reducing and uh, the waste you know we should uh, focus that uh, there should be least waste that goes out of my house so for that you can refuse you know have um, reusable bags that you can use for shopping um, uh, uh, then reduce you know whatever you are buying in uh, small small uh, you know portions you know go for a bulk consumption uh, reuse certain things i think we all are a good uh, fit example of reuse especially when you stay in india where your clothes your toys your books are all passed down to your siblings so this particular uh, habit is already ingrained to us so all we need to do is also extend that to a lot of things that we use in our daily lives if you have a musical instrument that you don't want to use any more instead of throwing it you can just pass it on or donate it to somebody and they can have a they can reuse it and you know have that particular life of the product is extended then repurpose obviously uh, if you are a person who is very good at craft then you can convert a lot more plastic waste into very beautiful art and craft uh, uh, you know products 
you know compost your organic waste and uh, you know you can uh, you can repurpose it into a very good fertilizer and a very good uh, you know a compost or a manure for your plants and on all of this ants are over and you still have your waste left that's the last thing you do is recycle and uh, for that you will need uh, you know to tie up with your local recycler so have the focus on thinking that how much i am generating how i can reduce how i can bring this particular uh, you know uh, da- value down and uh, you know and then in the end i do also do responsible recycling so uh, why recycle plastic i think everybody talks that you know stop using it why you should even recycling it it is difficult to live without it because it has become a very ingrained part of our life so uh you know some of the applications or some of the things in your life uh, like for example medicine strips or any medical uh, products or in fact uh, you know your folders your stationery or something that you just use in and out and you cannot live without it so definitely we should stop and uh, uh, you know minimize wherever we can but if we are able to recycle then how it is going to help us uh, recycling plastic leads to a clean environment you will not spot it into the environment into the you know into into the beach or into the land or into the soil so when you recycle all of that is then put to use into making different products so it stops ending leaking into the environment and obviously you know it it leads to a much more clean nature boost the economy we we obviously it's it's a, it's a it's a very good revenue generating uh, you know stream uh and obviously it does add to the economy of the country now we don't need to import uh, you know a lot more plastic but we can reuse and uh, you know recycle and uh, have our own plastic uh, waste being a very valuable resource and bring, bringing us much more revenue to the country um less carbon footprint i can tell you that plastic is green so obviously recycling is is uh, greener than even manufacturing so that obviously leads to a much more lesser energy intensive process when it comes to recycling generates employment uh, obviously when we started fiber cycle we had only two people who were working myself and there was one girl who had joined who would help me in the waste segregation but now it has expanded to a team of eight people and i'm really glad and uh, you know i really feel that this particular venture and any particular uh, uh, recycling venture will always uh, be a great uh, a great uh, opportunity for a lot more people to have to earn their livelihood and we feel proud that at least uh, from the the staff of two today we have multiplied the eight and we are able to uh, support the livelihood of eight people um so obviously it's a good gen- em- employment uh, generating or uh, you know stream and the last and not the least it's conservation of natural resources you know we are extracting and uh, uh, you know mining all the petroleum out of and obviously the plastic is definitely made out of that so if we recycle it we have to be less dependent on all these resources and we can pretty much just keep using them into our own particular uh, uh, you know a uh, circle and uh, and have less dependency and um, you know stop giving less damage to the environment um just to uh, tell you what are the type of uh, you know plastics that you will find around and what's a recycling code so a recycling code is a uh, a number that pretty much indicates the type of plastic that's used to manufacture a particular plastic product so you will see different numbers 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 and uh, remember that this the particular number doesn't stand for the number of times it's recycled it's actually indicating the type of plastic used so for example your bottles are made of put up pt uh, your uh, you know the shampoo bottles or half pack bottles or oil cans are made out of hdp uh, your milk bags are made out of ldp so you will uh, you know f- to, uh, find this triangle and the number actually indicates the Uh, the type of uh, plastic that's used and uh, also one of the questions that people also ask me is that you know is this plastic that's been used for my food it's going to leak into the food or something like that but that's not absolutely true because all the plastic especially used in food and beverage are certified for food application so they are being tested so that you know you are safe and, and there's no chemical or anything leaching into your food or beverage so um like we told you plastic recycling helps or you know plastic recycling is important watch the codes 
uh, you know, um, you know, I try to understand the types of plastic. So what is actually all this recycling? Or what is the word recycling? So basically, recycling is a process where you can convert the plastic waste into a same value product or a low value product or a high value product. And that's why it's actually bifurcated into recycling, downcycling and upcycling. So this the, the processes are dependent on what you make out of that plastic waste and you know what value you add to that. <clears throat> so let's talk to, re uh, to specifically recycling. So in recycling, you actually, uh, you know, collect all the plastic, you know, clean it and then, uh, you know, uh, melt it or, uh, you know, pressurize it to make, uh, you know, T-shirts, benches, bottles or any kind of lumber product that you can see in the slide. Um, and the T-shirt that I'm wearing is actually made out of 12 plastic bottles. Uh, so it's a resource, right? You've converted uh, this plastic waste into a resource and uh, created such beautiful products and these are of similar value because obviously um, uh, when you convert it uh, it it, it uh, definitely has a, some reduction in properties and that's why the products that are uh, made out of it obviously have to be mixed with a little bit the virgin plastic to have that particular good quality for for the specific application then upcycling. Upcycling is where you add value to your plastic waste. So if you are a person who is good at good at craft, like I told you before, you all can make so many different types of, uh, you know, uh, high value products out of it. You know, um, like you can see there is a bird feeder or people make nice plant potters and so many other things. And uh, also plastic uh, wrappers have been, uh, you know, also used to create some beautiful products like bags and bottles where they make the plastic fabric out of it and um, diary covers or laptop sleeves, etc. So, so many different types of new products are coming out, especially of plastic uh, waste. And uh, obviously this process adds a lot more value. So now your waste is, you know, converted into something that's of high value. Now downcycling. Um, <clears throat> downcycling is where you convert the plastic into its own back to its chemical form and you know it's no more it will be not more it will not be found anymore um, and it has gone into a cer certain application so we all know that it's being used for roads it's being used for making eco bricks it's being made it's being used for uh, generating energy and for fuel um, and uh, the, one of the reasons why plastic is also used for fuel uh, or uh, for energy, it's because, uh, you know, it has really high calorific value and burning of that uh, and generates good amount of energy that can be used in cement kins or, uh, you know, or factories. So now you have converted this particular plastic waste to a form of energy, which can be in the form of electricity or which can be in the form of a fuel. How can you contribute? Um, obviously, uh, through practicing the five hours, like I told you, um, segregate your waste, do not litter, take care of your surroundings wherever you go. And the most important thing is educate people. I think every day we should have a target of educating only one person. Make sure that their habits are changed, um, uh, especially in terms of waste segregation and you know, tell them the importance of plastic recycling, tell them the importance of electronic waste recycling. Or, uh, you know, in fact, Tell them that every resource that you extract from the environment is extremely important. And, uh, uh, you know, we all are indebted to that and we all should use them wisely and responsibly. So uh, uh, thank you everyone for, uh, you know, listening to me, um, uh, especially uh, Aisa Pune who gave me the platform to talk about this really important and crucial topic, which is the need of the art. And all the attendees who are watching this, uh, uh, you know, uh, I think a very deep and personal message from my side would be to practice the five R's, which is the refuse, reduce, re reuse, repurpose and recycle. Uh, all of these small steps and small contributions can make create a huge change for our environment. Remember that there is no planet B. Uh, you know, the earth is our only planet. It has been really generous to give us all these different type of resources and make our life convenient, make our life beautiful. So we owe a lot to it, especially. And uh, I think this particular small action of waste segregation and practicing the five hours 
can definitely be a a, a token of uh, gratitude towards this earth you know our own way of giving back to the environment so do start thinking about waste uh, stick to this theme to do this beautiful theme of national science day which is really concrete uh, because we all think about a sustainable future and i think if we act today you know we will definitely have a great vision of uh, you know sustainable future